Welcome to Champion Life Center's YouTube channel. You are listening to the messages from our Guelph and Cambridge satellite. We hope you enjoy this message by Happy Lumise. Please come and join us for our worship celebrations happening every Sunday, 3.30 p.m. at 55 De Vere Drive, Guelph, Ontario. See you then. I'm excited. I'm happy. Are you? I'm very, I'm, I'm especially happy today because our friend from the Philippines who's already um, moved to Canada and she's, and she and her husband and her family have lived in Woodstock for years. Um, Joyce and Jason, yeah, they're here today. Um, Ate Joyce has been our friend um, since we were youth. <laughs> in the Philippines, she was there when Nap got saved. You remember that? <laughs> she was there at the youth camp, and she was because she was a youth pastor, and she brought all her young people with her to our youth camp. And she was there when Nap got saved, and 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 we've been we've worked together for so many. We've worked together with Jesus Revolution in the Philippines, and um, I tell you, she's also a powerhouse. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, the Lord is using them in their church in Wood. Stock, and so we just want to thank you for coming and joining us today. Are you ready for the word? I'm ready. Let's dig in. This afternoon, um, I want to talk to you today about something that um, that always resonates in my heart every time. And and I, I, I you know, I, how do I say it? And it's not. I love to pray, and it's not a prayer where I have to be in a room or a certain, you know, I just, I just love to, I, 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 the Lord has, has granted all of us the privilege to feel his heart, even in the middle of busyness at work, that you, you would open, if you and I would just open our hearts, we would feel the heart of the Father, and sometimes in the busyness of, of our work, that sometimes the Lord invites us to a moment of intercession where he just flashes a name, a face in your, in your mind while you're at work, and and you and when you when you when that happens i want you to be sensitive and and just pause for a moment and say lord what's what's going on what do you want me to pray for and 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 i've lived my life that way and and what this message resonates within me about the power of faith but it's interesting because this story i've i've preached this story so many times in the past but i've gotten this outline and i i'm enjoying making this out i enjoyed making this outline and the title of my message is this faith not this faith it's this faith this faith it's how young people back in the philippines send text messages they use ds for this did you get this message <laughs> ds and faith that leads to breakthrough, this faith. Say, this faith. Say, I'll have this faith. <laughs> Turn with me to Mark chapter 9. Sorry, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And this is a very familiar story, but I love going over and over, going back to this story every once in a while. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, notice his name is preceded by his handicap. Blind Bartimaeus, kind of like short happy. <laughs> no, cute happy. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many, actually, you know what? Let's, let's do that again. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Cry out. There was a lot of multitude, and Bartimaeus was sitting at the side, and it's so easy to overlook the beggar that's always there every day, that he's become part of the, of the infrastructure 
on the way to Jericho. It's almost like a road sign. When you see blind Bartimaeus, you're close, you're, you're near Jericho. Kind of like when, you're, when, you, when you pass that um, um, nuclear plant by going to Toronto, you know that you're near Mississauga. Is that in Mississauga? <laughs> Milton. <laughs> Kind of like, so when Anna, Anna was in the car and then she wakes up in the middle of the drive and she says, oh, she sees that water tank of Milton, you know, re Milton. And she says, oh, we're in Cambridge. <laughs> but Bart, okay, let's go back. Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Wait, 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 I went ahead. Then many warned him to be quiet. Many warned him to be quiet, kind of like when, when Ryan releases a shout and somebody would say, like, why does he have to shout? <laughs> Come on, let's praise him. Why, does, why do we have to be loud? Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more. He doubled his cry, his volume. Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still. I love that. When was the last time you cried out and Jesus stood still? So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. <laughs> Rise. He is calling you. Be of good cheer. Rise. He is calling you. Is that what it says there? Okay, can you turn the, to the person beside you and says, be of good cheer, be happy. Rise, he's calling you. Not rice, steam rice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> rise, he is calling you. God's calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, very interesting question, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Turn with me to another story that's kind of similar in theme, but different character. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Verse 21 to 34. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude, always the context, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus, by name and when he saw him he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly saying my little daughter lies at the point of death come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live so jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years a hemorrhage bleeding issue for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was not getting better, was no better, but rather grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Notice there was a crowd. But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude throng thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? Duh. And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, 
Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is, a, is, is sharper than a two-edged sword. And we thank you, Father, that your word is able to penetrate and divide that which is of the flesh and that which is of the spirit. It is able to expose the deepest intentions of our hearts. Lord, I thank you that your word is mighty like a stone. It can break the hardest of our hearts. And so we thank you for your word today. May your word bear much fruit in our lives in the name of Jesus we pray amen two stories two characters displaying this faith displaying this faith and and before we get to the first ki first kind of faith let me backtrack to Bartimaeus story so Bartimaeus the word Bartimaeus, the name Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. And the word Timaeus is actually a Greek name. Timaeus means honor, honorable. And it's very interesting that the son of honor is a beggar. Do you get what I mean? That his identity, he was born as a son of honor, but because of his issue, he lived all his life as a professional beggar. In the times of Jesus, in Jesus' time, beggars, most of the beggars were, bl were the blind, the maim, and, and, and the other, I forgot the other, the other category of sickness. But they were, the, they were the beggars in their day. And these beggars were real professional beggars. Not professional as in they get paid to beg, but professional as in that's what they do every day. If you read through the if you if you read the amplified bible version it says that now Bartimaeus who was sitting at the side of uh, uh, at the side who was uh, now Bartimaeus who was sitting da, 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 at the son sat by the road begging in the amplified version it says sat by the road begging open and close parenthesis or open and close brackets as was his custom so meaning to say every day bartimaeus was on that spot that was his spot there could have probably been a label that said bartimaeus spot because he was blind how can he be in the same spot <laughs> How would he know that was his spot? So I'm thinking that, you know, somebody, and in other, in, 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 the, in I think in the gospel of, of Luke, it says that there were two, or in Matthew, there were two of them who, beggars that were blind, sitting by the road on the way to Jericho. And here's Bartimaeus. All he had was his garment. All he had was his garment because when it gets cold, he, that's his only way to keep himself warm. And so he was known to be the beggar that sits by that road. And it so happened that day that Jesus was passing by that road. It was another regular begging day for, Jer for, for Jeremiah, for Bartimaeus. It was another regular day. It was another working day for Bartimaeus. Here I am. I, I'm back to my spot, and I'm going to be begging. And he's been doing it for years, but then he hears something different. After all the years of him sitting by the side of that road, he hears something different. He hears that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And I'm thinking in my mind, when I read stories, I like, to do my, I like to do it with my imagination. And I'm thinking in my mind, when he heard the rumors that Jesus is passing by, here's blind Bartimaeus who's used to his blindness. He's gotten used to his blindness. Some of us, we've gotten used to our issues. Some of us, it has become our identity. Oh, that you know, that, 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 that um, uh, uh, lady that always gets easily hurt. Oh, you know, he, she's onion skin. Oh, you know, I'm onion skin. Oh, you know, I'm too sad. We identify ourselves with our issue. And here's blind Bartimaeus, he's identified by his issue, and he's gotten used to the name. And yet one day when he hears that Jesus is passing by, he begins to dare. See, if I was used to my issue and I hear that this teacher that I've heard of so many miracles coming by, I could, and I've been begging 
begging has become his identity because of his issue, he would have said, this is my chance to ask for money. Right? But not Bartimaeus. And I want to challenge us today that the first level of faith that Bartimaeus uh, uh, de demonstrated is a daring faith. It's a daring faith. Bartimaeus dared to believe at that moment when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he dared to believe that what if this is the day that I stop being blind? Not so much about stop begging, but stop being blind. Some of us, we are in a certain lifestyle because of certain issues, and we hope that our lifestyle will change, but we don't believe our issues can change. Let me slow down. Some of us, we live a certain lifestyle because of certain issues. And we pray to God and we ask God to change our lifestyle instead of asking him to change our issues, to address our issues. And here's Bartimaeus. He's saying, you know what? What if today I stop being blind? Jesus is passing by. He's not part of Jesus' agenda. He was not in Jesus' agenda. Jesus was just, it was just a, a, a route that Jesus took. Jesus was going to Jerusalem. Go, Jesus was going to enter into Jerusalem. And, and that, the next part of that uh, passage is the triumphal entry. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And so here's, here's Jesus passing by and Bartimaeus saying, what if today my blindness stops? What if today my fear of rejection that I've lived with all my life ends today? What if today all this fear fear of failure that I've been dealing with all my life and coping and coping and coping that I've defined my lifestyle from this fear of failure what if today this fear ends and here's blind Bartimaeus he shouts out Jesus son of David have mercy on me and when he said son of David he was practically saying Messiah because he, that's a reference to the prophetic words that the son of David will be the Messiah. He dared to believe the impossible because he's been there every day begging. He has learned to live his life begging. He has learned to live his life blind. He's gotten so far. He's survived being blind. But now he's believing for the impossible. He's saying, I'm not, hey, this, this could just be the one, la the, one, the one time that Jesus passes by. I'm not going to ask for money. I'm going to ask for the most impossible. See, in their day, when somebody's blind, it's either the, the, the culture that day, the religious culture that day, when they see someone blind, is that they believe that that person either has a lot of sins or the parents had a lot of sins. And that was a punishment. That was the religious belief in their day. And here is Bartimaeus displaying daring faith. Dare to pray for what you're believing. Dare to overcome shame. Why? Because there was already a stigma on him. You're blind because you probably sinned a lot. Or you're blind because your parents probably sinned a lot. And there's a stigma. How can I ask God for a breakthrough when I, I, I've messed up? How can I ask God for my healing when this was because of my foolishness? How many of you can relate to that? How can I ask God for a financial breakthrough when I got myself into debt? How can I, you know, I, I'm not going to dare ask that because it's my fault anyway. But Bartimaeus displays a daring faith where, you know what, I'm going to overcome the shame of my issue. I am going to overcome the shame of my issue. I might just be a beggar and I might just be blind. And maybe, maybe I'm not worth Jesus standing still because of what I did or what my parents did. Maybe I don't deserve to ask for healing. Because my parents probably were sinful and that's why I'm blind and I probably don't deserve it. But you know what? I am going to. Daring faith. He dared to overcome the shame of his issue. He dared to overcome the shame that he was going to expose himself to by crying out. Church, there is a sound to faith. And faith 
sometimes doesn't sound comfortable. Faith sometimes sounds disturbing. There is a sound to faith. A daring faith doesn't care if people, if people think I'm too much, if people think I am, I am, I am overreacting, if I am overbelieving. You see, there is a shame when you dare to believe because sometimes I, 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 we're afraid that we might fail. We're afraid. I remember when we, when we sent out our young people back in the Philippines, when we sent out our young people to the mall, uh, uh, some, men, some of you are familiar with Ayala Mall, and, and we send them out to buy, two by two to prophesy and heal the sick, whoever they see sick or whoever they feel the Lord is leading them to. And they shared, after that activity, they shared that there was this one person on a wheelchair. And all these young people were so excited. You know, young people are full of faith, daring faith. You know, I can, I can do all things through Christ. And here they are at, at the mall. And they approached this this, this, this lady that was on the wheelchair, and they said, can, I, can we pray for you? Can we, what is wrong with your, uh, is there something wrong with your leg? We're, of course, they introduced themselves. And so this young, this old lady, not really old, middle-aged, middle-aged lady. Middle-aged are not old, right? Nobody answers. <laughs> so middle, <laughs> this middle-aged lady begins to explain why she was in a wheelchair, and I forgot what the reason was. And they said, well, we, we, we are actually believing that God can pray, can heal you. Can we pray for your healing? And immediately, the person that was with that lady said, no, don't give her false hope. Does that sound familiar? See, sometimes we don't want to dare to overcome the shame that our hope might be deferred. And so we don't dare to ask the impossible. Here's Bartimaeus saying, son of David, have mercy on me. And I can just imagine from the moment Jesus stood still and called for him, I can just imagine what was running in his mind. Oh no, oh no, he's actually calling me. What am I going to ask for? Uh, should I ask for a house? Should I ask for, a, for money? Should I ask for, for, you know, there's a lot of things he can ask for, right? And it's, it's usually we ask for the less risk of failing. Right? We usually ask for that which we have the least risk to fail. So it's okay to ask God to pray for a headache. Lord, heal my headache. I can, but Lord, heal my tummy ache. Lord, Lord, burn the fats in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord, and Lord, you know, and the least risk, the least amount of risk. We're, we are so daring to pray, but we are so afraid to pray for the most impossible because we are afraid of the shame when it doesn't happen. Can anybody relate? But here's Bartimaeus. He cried out. And listen, he dared to be misunderstood because a lot of those multitudes that were following Jesus saw him as a nuisance. It's like, Oh, come on, you've, 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 you've been there all your life. Like, who are you anyway that Jesus is busy? Jesus is going to Jericho and Jesus, you know, there's, be quiet, be quiet. So somebody is, somebody is saying that, you know what, I got diagnosed with, I, so recently my boss's mom and, and my boss's mom thanks the whole church for praying for her because every prayer meeting we would include her in our prayer. She got diagnosed with cancer and and, and so they had to do a lot of operation, and we had to pray for her. And we've, I visited her in the hospital, and she said, you know, the more prayers, I really appreciate it. And, and make the long story short, now she is cancer-free. The doctor has declared her cancer-free. Cancer -free. Praise the Lord. And she had to go through the process of the operation and all of that. And we prayed that, ev that every operation would remove every bit of cancer, that it did not spread. We declared that there was nothing spreading around her 
uh, system in her body. And so when the doctor declared that she was cancer free, we gave all the glory to Jesus. And I told my boss, I said, I said, when she first found out that she had cancer, I said, it's not the end. I said, it's not the end. You know what? The, God, can, God can remove this. God can do this. And so she literally brought her mom to the office so that I can pray for her the day before the operation. And so we, when, when the doctor declared that she was cancer-free, my boss even testified that, that that situation brought her and her mom closer. Like it really built their relationship stronger. And she said, I, all, I was afraid that that diagnosis would take away from me, but it actually added something in me. And I said, that's the beauty of what God can do. And here's, so here's that, why did I get, how did I get, because you can be misunderstood, because faith is not popular, because when somebody gets diagnosed with cancer, the most expected response is, oh, or when somebody gets, get, when somebody gets, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> when somebody has a problem with, with their marriage or if somebody has a problem with their child, the, the expected response is, oh, really, really, oh, that's too bad. Instead of, you know what, let's pray. When Sister Sally, Sister Sally's heart was failing her for since, uh, what was it, December? Since December, right? And then she was supposed to be scheduled for a reset of her of her valve, of her mechanical valve, because she had a hard time breathing. And we just said, let's pray that, yes, you have to schedule that. And, let, you know, if that needs to get done, let that get done. But let's pray before that happens, that God will intervene. And, and later on, we, we, we started talking, and I said, you know, have you ever thought that your word creates your world? And so when you wake up in the morning, you declare your, on your heart, heart be regularized. I command this heartbeat to be regularized because faith has a sound. Faith has a sound. Now, this is not a teaching that's extreme, wherein if somebody doesn't get healed, you didn't have enough faith. You know, that's not what this teaching is about. It is a teaching of not giving up until not giving up until because there is times there are times and seasons I, you know when they diagnosed pastor nap and told me she, he had a 20 percent chance to live and he had all these tubes around him i said no way we just got engaged <laughs> no way it's not his time to go i don't think god will get me engaged and then take my husband uh, uh, take my fiance away i said <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get the chance to enjoy our marriage? No way. So I, anyway, I digress. But faith, daring faith, has the risk of being misunderstood. When, my, when his aunt, aunt, Lola, 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 purring, Lola, grandma, when his grand, aunt, grandma, great aunt, Grandma, Aunt Grandma, <laughs> when they pulled me aside at the hospital because, you know, Nanai, uh, Na Pastor Nap's mom already flew home because a doctor told her you gotta be here because he's not gonna, he might not make it, only 20% chance to live. And, and his grandma pulled me aside because we just got engaged. And so he, she pulled me aside, took me to the bathroom. <laughs> And while everyone was crying over him, I refused to cry. I was the only one not crying. I said, no, I'm not. I don't believe that. I'm going to cancel that. And, and then her grandma said, I know, I know. Oh, that's so good of you. You believe. And I knew she wasn't believing with me. I, I, I knew she, they thought that I was crazy. I knew, like, I knew they thought I was in denial. But I wasn't in denial. I was standing in the word of God. And faith sometimes gets you being misunderstood. Here's Bartimaeus being blind all his life. But today, he's believing he won't be blind anymore. Can you imagine that? All your life, you can't see. And today, you're believing, I'm going to see. Today, I'm going to see. And you can be misunderstood as arrogant. And you can be misunderstood as in denial. And you can be misunderstood as crazy. 
It's okay. It's okay. Dare. Say dare. dare. It's not over until it's over. That's the theme. It's not over until it's over. So when you look at your child that's not in the, in walking in the, in, the, in the will of God, it's not over until it's over. When you see your marriage starting to dwindle and starting to break and starting to, you know, go through all that, all that process that is not desirable, it's not over until it's over. It is always the darkest before dawn. And here is Bartimaeus, it's always the darkest. Always the darkest. I'm going to see my dawn. He dared to be misunderstood. He dared to make a noise. He dared to make a sound. Because faith has a sound. When we were in the youth, our former youth pastor, Joe Alfafara, I could never forget his teaching. He said, everything has ears. Everything has ears. Pause. Everything has ears. Because when God created the world, he said, let there be light. Boom. Everything has ears. And so when my, when my grandma, when his grandma told me he's not going to make it, just, just start to accept that, I said, no. If there is 20% chance to live, then he's one of the 20% because he was, she was giving me statistics of how many survived this pancreatitis. And I said, if there's 20% chance, then he's going to be one of those in the percentage that will, that will, oh, it's, oh, I understand. And I would go every day, every day while everyone was crying. When they leave, when they leave, I'm alone with Pastor Knapp, all his tubes. He's not responding. He can't eat for two weeks, can't eat. Just tubes and all of that. And I would just lay hands and say, you're going to live and you're going to serve the Lord. You're going to live and you're going to serve the Lord. No response. <laughs> no response. <laughs> Faith has a sound. What are you believing for? Release it. Don't just keep it in. Release it. Release it. Dare to believe and not just believe, but pray. You can believe and not release it, but until you release it, you are holding back what you're believing. Let me say that again. You can believe all you want, but if you don't release it, there is power in your words. The, pro the book of Proverbs says death and life lies in the power of our tongue. You can believe all you want, but if you don't dare to say it, you don't really believe it. Okay, that's just the first. So let me just fast forward. It's already five. Oh my goodness, I'm just in the first. Okay, inconvenient. Inconvenient faith. Here's, here's the woman with the issue of blood. Do you know that in their time, women with that issue are considered unclean? Meaning to say you're not supposed to touch anyone at all. And if you're in the crowd, you will be, you will be really penalized for being in the crowd with your issue of blood. It was a total social stigma. It was a total so, uh, uh, something that was against social uh, expectations, social law, sanitation laws. They were considered unclean. Her going into the crowds was the same as a leper going into the crowds. They were considered unclean. But here's the woman with the issue of blood, and she took the inconvenience the inconvenience of going stealth mode and just saying, you know what? I don't care what I have to do, what position I have to make just to get my breakthrough because faith means that you are willing to be inconvenienced. There is an inconvenience in the process of faith. There is an inconvenience in the process of faith. It's called waiting. <laughs> do you know how inconvenient waiting is? When you're waiting for your answered prayer, but I want to encourage you today when you're waiting for an answered prayer, just, just 
Everything you do, just exercise your faith. I remember one preacher telling this illustration that your, our faith muscles is like, you know, punching these block, the, this huge block of concrete. And you're just punching and or you're trying to kick and you're trying to do everything you, you're doing and it won't move, it won't budge. But then every time you do it, your muscles get stronger until one day when you kick it, it's actually moving. Not because the concrete got weaker, but because your muscles got stronger. And faith is the same. And faith requires a lot of times a lot of inconvenience there is a process of faith that's inconvenient do you know how inconvenient it was for Bartimaeus to stand up and say rise be happy rise he's calling you do you know how inconvenient it was like and probably like going to Jesus he's probably wondering like okay okay this is my moment this is my moment it's like what am I gonna ask for what am I gonna ask for and this fear probably that's hitting him you know like should I dare to ask the most impossible and if I ask will it be ever be, be even be granted when you're believing for your children to get saved when you're believing for your marriage to work and every day you are seeing the opposite happen there is an inconvenience of faith when you're believing for something and you don't see anything happen in the spirit there is an inconvenience of faith but it's that exact inconvenience that you allow yourself to go through that actually leads you to break through. It's that exact inconvenience that if you just remain faithful, meaning full of faith, in the process no matter how inconvenient it looks, when God tells you to let go of that friendship or let go of that relationship because it's not adding kingdom value to you. When the Lord tells you to let go of this certain, certain thing or, let, or, you know, give your house to your son. I don't know. <laughs> you, know, you know. I don't know what God is requiring of you in this season in your life. But sometimes he will require of you to do something very inconvenient. But that process in itself of obeying despite the inconvenience is what positions you to break through. It may be that God's going to take you for a season of, of doing something you never imagined yourself to do. But that process will actually bring you to your breakthrough. Inconvenient faith, lastly. Yay, lastly. Specific faith. Daring, inconvenient, specific faith. Here's the interesting question that Jesus asks you and me. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Can you imagine? Can you imagine Jesus facing blind Bartimaeus? It was very obvious, but Jesus honors Bartimaeus enough to give him the chance to declare his faith. Jesus honored Bartimaeus enough to give him the chance to verbalize his faith. How many of you, if you were standing before Jesus right now and he asked you, what do you want me to do for you? How many of you would actually ask for that which you've been wanting for breakthrough. I'm not talking about more cars, more money, more, you know, I'm not talking about that, but a breakthrough. Lord, I have, I have been hot-tempered all my life. I really want to be gentle. <laughs> That's always my prayer. <laughs> That's also Pastor Neff's prayer for me. <laughs> Lord, I want to receive my sight. Faith is specific. Faith is specific. Faith is not just say, well, actually, Lord, you know, I would want to, to see, but if that's not your will, you know, um, okay, just give me money. 
<laughs> he could have prayed that. Well, actually, Lord, the ideal, the ideal thing is that this whole nation would, would bow down to you, Jesus. But, you know, it's okay. Just give us more members in our church. You get what I mean? No. God's looking for sons and daughters to get before him and say, God, give me Canada or I'll die. Like John Knox praying for Scotland. Give me Scotland or I'll die. Lord, give me my office. Give me every employee in my office as my inheritance. Open the doors for me to share the good news of your kingdom to my friends. Lord, give me my friends, every one of them. Do you know that our superintendent who has been coming to church, but he's not here today, <laughs> that we I literally, the moment we started living in the apartment, I, he was our target prayer. Lord, we pray for our superintendent. Lord, we speak salvation to his household. Lord, we just kept calling him into the kingdom. Calling. I don't know if he heard us because we live right above him. <laughs> I don't know if he heard us, but he is always, we, I, I, we were just talking about in the car. Do you realize that because we were very specific and now we're, we're starting to pray for this friend in the apartment that's always, his office is in his car. He's always in the parking lot. He's retired, but his office is in his car. And so every, every name that we know in the apartment, Lord, we call them by name. Lord, be specific. Be specific. Faith specifies. What do you want me to do for you in school? What do you want me to do for you in your business? What do you want me to do for you in your work? In your family, in your marriage, in your children. What do you want me to do for you? Instead of just, there is value to saying, Lord, bless my children. But be specific. Lord, I pray that my children will be passionate for Jesus. They will not just be church kids, but Lord, that they will encounter your love. Be specific. Disfaith. Daring. Inconvenient. Specific. This faith. Can't forget that. <laughs> La I said lastly, right? So the second lastly. <laughs> Every battle, do you realize that Jesus already won the battle? Yes? Do you agree? Jesus already won the battle. Jesus already defeated the enemy. But we still have a fight. And what's the fight about? The fight is to faith. It is not the fight to be victorious, but the fight to believe that we are victorious. That is the fight. Paul says in 2 Timothy verse 4, chapter 4, verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. The fight that we go through every day is not a fight to be victorious. It's the fight to believe that we are victorious in Christ. That is the fight. We are victorious. Jesus already won the victory. Jesus already has released provision for us. Jesus has already released healing for us. And the fight we go through is not the fight to be victorious, but the fight to believe because it is in our believing that we are able to receive. Faith is your access to what has already been provided. Illustration, if a rich man comes to you, if a rich man, if a rich woman like me uh, <laughs> comes to you and I offer you liquid, liquid cash, $1 million from Lotto, no, $1 million, and I say, all these are yours. She, she, she doesn't have to say, Oh, Lord, give me $1 million. It's all right there. But if she doesn't believe, she won't receive. Do you get me? You, it can sit right there in front of you. But if you can't believe, oh, what? What did I do to deserve this? What, 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 what did I? What was my performance? I mean, why would I get $1 million? And, and, and like, how, why would you just give it away? What's the catch? Is this a trick? 
Why do you want to heal my mom? Or why do you want to heal my dad? Or why do you want to restore my marriage? What's the catch? And you don't believe, but it's there. And do you realize that even if you decide after you receive your breakthrough, even after you decide not to follow Jesus, that it will not disqualify what he did for you? How many do you think received their healing and breakthrough were a part of the people that shouted, crucify him? Do you realize this? That when God offers you every good and perfect gift comes from above. The father of lights who does not shift. No shifting shadows. No, ah, uh, today you were good. You deserve it. Tomorrow you got 500,000 from the 1 million, but you never prayed. Ah, uh, I'll take the other 500,000. God doesn't do that. Every good and perfect gift comes. And you know what? Yes, it can be abused. Yes, it can. But you know what? He is good. His goodness knows no bounds. His mercy endures forever. And that is why when, when, we, when we fight, when we do our prayer, to, when we battle, when we feel a battle, it is not a battle to win. It is a battle to believe. It is really a fight of faith. Because around us are many voices that try to steal our faith. Are you getting this, church? Not only will the enemy do its best to steal our courage to believe again, we also have friends who do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have friends that, ah, never mind. It's okay, it's okay. You know, as long as, as long as you're... Anyway, I, I don't want to get in trouble, okay? But we have people, we have office mates who will tell us the opposite of faith. You get what I mean? I have a lump here. Oh, you better get that biopsied. You know, it could be this and it could be that and it could be immediately all the, the worst case scenario. <laughs> it's just, it's actually just a lump. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have all of that competing voices. Oh, you know, I, I, I tried to lose weight. Oh, you know, just, you're cute like that anyway. <laughs> no speaking bad words. And so, church, I want to encourage us today to get back to faith. And the Word of God in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, actually gives us a, a starting point how to go back to faith. Romans 10, 17, I think it's the next slide, or two slides down. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. The, the, there was one passage there where the father of the demonized son was saying, Lord, help my unbelief. I believe, help my unbelief. And many of us, we are in that position. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Faith comes from hearing. Romans 10. Faith comes by. Faith comes by. Hearing, hearing and hearing by the word of my daddy, the word of my wife, the word. No, the word of God. And sometimes you come to a point where you just have to shut the door to unbelief and doubt, and just get your face on the word of God and say, God, what is your word for me for this? Is this what you want? What is the word for me? What is your word for me for this? And release that through your mouth. Confess it. Faith has a sound. Daring faith. Inconvenient faith specific faith. I want to pray today for those of us that have lost the courage to believe for something again. I want to pray for those of us who, who, have, who have experienced a lot, some betrayal, some disappointments, that we're afraid to trust again. And I, want to re I really believe the Lord wants to release our hearts to fresh faith where you can dare 
to believe the impossible, where your prayer life is no longer just in general words, generalities, but specific. 